Hi there, Scott here, KD4EBL. I wanted to show you a little bit of what um, I got up at Dayton this year. You know, Dayton is a wonderful place, uh, 700 flea market vendors, you know, room after room of new stuff, and I think I got some pretty neat stuff here. First thing I kind of let you know is you get a little Dayton button here for every year you go, and I, this is my sixth year, so I have six of these little buttons here. Walking around the flea market, within the first five minutes, I had my list. And the first thing I was looking for was a BTVM. And the first one I found was a Heath kit. Uh, in, in really kind of nice, you know, it's got a couple of nicks on the paint, but uh, really looks good. Cable's in good shape. And as well as there's movement here. Now, I haven't plugged it in yet because I'm going to be using my Variac. And I want to double check everything. Uh, I do got to make the probe, uh, and I got to look up how to do that, but I understand that's not very hard. So that was within a minute of me walking to the flea market on Friday. Two tables down, and, and this, was, um, this was $7. Two tables down was the Eco voltmeter. Now this does have a crack in it. Uh, they wanted $10.00 but they had marked it with an X down to $5. And I talked to the guy and he said $4. Uh, he said, I don't know if it works. Everything's there, knobs are original. Uh, as you can see from the case, also in very good shape. Uh, the needle does go back and forth. Couple of cracks on the plastic here. Uh, I think we can live with that and maybe be able to fix some of that. The next thing uh, I was looking for uh, was a remote antenna tuner, uh, excuse me, antenna, a remote antenna switch. And literally, like I said, um, within the first five minutes, I found all this stuff. I found the uh, Ameritron out here. remote antenna switch, uh, brand new, talked to the guy. He never had it outside, always inside. All the parts are here. Um, knew they're, I think, about $300 or $250. And I picked that up for about $100 after talking to the guy. Uh, very good shape. I think we're, that was a good deal. Now, things slowed down a little bit after that because these things got heavy. But I continued on. Uh, one of the things I was looking for was another radio for a new project. And I found this RCA Victor here. And uh, I really like the red dial in the center there. It really looked good. It was fairly clean. Now it definitely needs to be restored. Uh, in the back they had cut the cable, which was fraying, and, and that's a piece of speaker wire there. Uh, it does look like almost everything's here. Uh, five, uh, All-American five, and actually I'm only seeing four here, so uh, one, two, three, four. Ooh. I may be uh, interesting because there may be one missing here. So we'll figure that out. Uh, but it's a bake light case. It's in fairly good shape. And I thought this would make a great restoration. Now, walking around, you also get your choice of, of free stuff. And in one of the free piles, I picked up copies of, uh, I have a TS430 at Kenwood, the supplemental user's guide and the service manual and somebody was giving these away for free. So I said that, thank you very much. I thought that would be good. And that was probably it for the first day. Second day, we're walking around. This would be on Saturday. We're looking through some boxes and I found the Kenwood antenna tuner, the AT-130. Now I have a 130 downstairs that somebody literally I rescued from the trash. Uh, this looked in pretty clean shape. All the knobs seemed to work. A uh, guy didn't know anything about it. It was a silent key. And I picked that up for about $30. Uh, I thought that was a good deal. Um, and we'll, we'll hopefully that will work and that will match the 130 I have. One of the things we always can use is more coax seal. And I saw these, I think, last year or the year before, where there's kits. And I think they're from some of the satellite um, installers where they have a kit with all the with all the vinyl tape, and I think there's like one, two, three, four, five things of the very thick coax seal. And one guy had them for $10, and I said, well, I, 
looked pretty good. It was still pretty early in the day. And you know, this is probably uh, seven or eight pounds here. And so later on, I was walking by another one, and he had on there seven. And it was starting to rain a little bit, so I said, how about a rainy day special, two for 10? And the guy looked for a sec, he said, sure, take the wet ones. So I got two of those for $10, and that will last me a very long time. As with Dayton, um, one of the nice things is you can go inside and you can find quite a few vendors there. And one of the things I always like to pick up is maybe the latest catalogs from DX Engineering. I got some of those. Uh, a really nice bumper uh, sticker saying I'm monitoring uh, the two meter uh, national calling frequency. And the other thing I always do is pick up a couple of these uh, grid maps and the uh, the latest frequency charts here, put that right side up, because they're always free. I always pick up, and if I have extra ones, I'll take them into our ham club and, and share those. Uh, I got the latest uh, DX engineering catalog, as well as some information on a few other odds and toys that I probably can't afford, but I thought I'd go, go look in there and see what the, they are. Since I re renewed with WARL uh, membership, um, they used to give a, like a whole handbook if you renewed for three years. And this year they stopped doing that. They only, if you renewed for three years or one year, you just got a book. So I just did for one year, uh, even more wire antenna classics. Uh, I started reading this, it's very nice. Uh, and it's a nice little addition to, you know, I could renew through the mail and get nothing or I can go there and get a little, little uh, um, antenna book. And I thought that was nice. Now, as I was walking around, one of the people I got to meet was John from Arkansas. And John well, until next time, uh, probably be in a couple of weeks, maybe, maybe three. I don't know. It all depends. This is John. John and I had a great time. Uh, we walked around both days together, quite a bit on the second day. Uh, one of the things he had come up with is some acid brushes, which... He likes to cut a little bit like that and use it for cleaning and for alcohol and things. Uh, he gave me two of those. So those were free. I thought that was a great deal. Uh, one of the things he also likes to do, said that he's these terminal strips, uh, and he found uh, brand new ones for about 15 cents a piece. And I went by and found some, and some of them are new and a lot of them are used, but uh, was able to buy this whole bag for 50 cents. And there's you know, one, two, three, and four terminals, uh, with how many uh, terminals are on these strips here. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. Uh, lots of freebies out there. Um, I did find a nice little pair of wire clippers, um, 10 cents. I thought that was one of the deals of the day. They got nice, uh, a good spring on them, and that was pretty good. So that is mostly what I got. Oh, and a couple of, uh, uh, when I put some antennas up this spring, I, I used up all my barrel connectors. So brand new barrel connectors for a dollar a piece, and that's another good deal. So I thought this was all pretty good. Uh, now, when I was with John, John, one of the things he has done is restored a, uh, a Hammerlin uh, 129X, and that's one of his favorite radios. Uh, he's done some modifications to it. He's, he's talked about it loves that radio and I found a 129X and I said you know if, if John figured this out I could probably figure this out too and so when I looked around and this was on Friday and I, and I looked at this I said well maybe I'll come by with John because the radio when you open it up was was in pretty good condition but there were a couple of plugs inside that I didn't see what they were for uh, and there was a uh, a tube socket that they had wired two wires and I was like well there's something somebody's modded something here so I said you know what I'll, I'll come by the next day and, and the guy was offering it at a very reasonable price I looked it up uh, you know online with eBay and some others so I said okay the price is reasonable so the next morning I get up and say okay well, let's walk over to the 129x and one of my uh, friends was with me. He said, yeah, I'll look this over too. And he goes over and, and the guy hadn't set up yet because there was, there was some rain Saturday morning. So we walked around the corner from there and on the table, as we, as we go plumbing down here, was this beauty. 
This is a Hammerlin HQ150, and it is a probably a little better receiver than the 129X, other than they both are a little bit different. It's a much older, this was probably built in one, I think it's 1955, 1956. Uh, really good condition, has all the original knobs, uh, had the speaker with it. And one of the things I, I kind of wanted to show you when I looked at this is, as I'm looking around at some of these radios, Here's a case where the guy had replaced the speaker wire with a shielded, let's get into the picture here, with a shielded cable with actually the terminal connections on it. And they're color coded, two for the speaker, one for the ground. And I thought that was a sign that this had been well taken care of. Uh, I'm gonna do a whole separate video on the 150, but needless to say, when you're looking at these radios, you pop the top, you look inside, this one was fairly clean. Uh, all the dials worked, um, all the tuners worked. When I talked to the gentleman there, said this was a silent key, uh, that the person who had this was, it was in his main operating station. Um, he was 94, he kept his equipment in very good condition. And I was like, okay, and uh, I went ahead and bought it. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna make an executive decision. This is in much better shape than the 129X. Uh, the guy said it does work. Uh, you're always a little wary about that with some of these older rigs, and I will bring it up on a Variac, but it does work. And I think, uh, I think I then brought John over and my friend over, and they said, wow, you've got a great deal. And this has a crystal oscillator in it. It's 12 tubes, all the tubes are in there. It has one of the later tubes, which was one of the modifications to switch one of the tubes. Uh, now that I've gotten it home, I've looked on the back and got, downloaded a manual and noticed it has a three-pronged plug so that whoever had this replaced the plug, replaced the three terminals, screw terminals that were the two for the antenna and one for the ground with a, um, I, I always forget the name, it's a, it's a PL259 mate. So it's the uh, female version of that. And actually this one, instead of having one hole in the center, has two little holes, but that was done. And there's a BNC connector, which I gotta figure out why they added that in there. It's probably to monitor something, uh, or maybe to put a frequency in there to calibrate it. We we'll figure that out. But this is really good. And I um, haven't plugged it in yet, because I wanna get it up on the Variac and give it a little cleaning and, uh, before I actually do that. But really a nice show. So that is what I got in Dayton. And for those of you listening, I have a couple extra of these Dayton 2016 pins. And if you collect these pins, I'd be happy to send one. Just leave something in the comments below. Uh, if you like the video, great. If it's too long or too short, if you wanted more information, just let me know because I'm going to be making a lot more of these videos in the future. So that's all I have. 73 from KD4EBL, Scott Johnston.